we meet again, Tim Minchin. Yeah, it was nasty last time. <laughs> There's a lot of blows. Now, last time I interviewed you, Matilda was taking the world by storm and now here it is um, opening in Australia. It's got a whole life of its own now. Yeah, it's amazing. It, it's, uh, it's cool to have contributed to something that, that lives and does its thing. I, sometimes it freaks me out. <laughs> For a musical to work, there is such an extreme amount of teamwork that mm. goes into that and collaboration. You do a lot of um, solo shows as well. How do you enjoy that collaborative process on such a large scale? I love it, I think, uh, and it's kind of why I'm doing more of this and less of that. The, the buzz of performing is uh, unparalleled and uh, the joy of being involved in playing music and, and laughter and getting people clapping you is really buzzy but um there's something hard about collaborating that's really lovely also the push pull i mean with dennis and i dennis uh who, who wrote the script um who's one of my favorite people on the planet the first few weeks were like but but i don't think you understand what i'm trying to do with um yes good but this i need i need you to change that line because it's you know and he's like but that that lyric clashes with this I'm like well you have to change it then <laughs> but, and, and, and then slowly you fall in love you you find your way in and then and then if the show goes well then you get to be best mates forever <laughs> if it's a total flop you're like I told awkward. you <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah. Um, how do you know when you're working on something when it's finished when it's good enough well that is probably one of the biggest learn lessons I learnt the thing you've got to remember is that a theatre piece is an artefact of what you made in the time you had, which is just so brilliant. And a painting's like that and a comedy show and all art is needs to be seen as an artefact of what you did in the time you had. People get stuck on that. They write their novel for 30 years. Oh, it's not really... You know, like, don't give yourself three months to write your first novel. Like, binge on it or maybe a year. Uh, yeah, personally, I think what can't be made in a year is probably not worth my, you know, in a way. You, you, you've got to give yourself a time. That you, a restricted time is like the edge of the canvas or the two-hour mark at a musical. It's, it, it's one of your parameters. Is that easier to say, though, than it is to do? Yes, of course. So that has to be a discipline. Done. You've had so much success in recent years. How has it changed your life? I've become unbearable. It's obvious. I'm, I'm, uh, I know, that's where I was going I'm with rude that to everyone around me. I punched a waiter. <laughs> um, uh, I think it's... Um, I think I've been very cautious about how to exploit the opportunities that have come along, so I've decided to concentrate on writing and be a bit behind the scenes m more. Can you just take work now, though, that now that you want to do rather than that you have to pay yeah. the bills? Yeah, well, um, yeah, yeah, um, for now. While Matilda runs, um, I'm, I'm more free to uh, do nothing if I want, probably. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I have no interest in doing nothing. I, 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 I didn't um, get into this industry for financial security, that would have been a crazy decision. What is amazing and what is almost unique, or at least very rare, is that I um, get to do so many different things and that's a conflation of a whole lot of cool stuff that happened. One is I got no success in my 20s, so I kept going, OK, I'll do a play and then I'll compose a thing and then I'll do some, a band gig and then I'll do some comedy and I'll write a poem and I'll, you know, write an essay on science writing or whatever. And so by the time I got success, I had I got some skills, I guess. I worry loads about kids who are 21 and uh, do the X Factor from zero to whatever. A lot. I just... Because even me getting just a little bit known as a 30-year-old as a or 32 to go through the experience of starting to get stopped on the street, which you've gone through and all that stuff, I was like oh, this changes how you see yourself in the world and 
I'm very interested in it psychologically. I mean, no one likes to hear famous people talking about how hard it is being famous, and and it, none of it bothers me. And I've moved to a city where no one recognises me anyway now, as kind of part of my game plan of not letting that do my head in. But it's a whole thing. You you start sitting outside yourself and you become super self-aware and that almost inevitably turns to narcissism, which is why famous people are so screwy. It's not their fault. It's what humans do if everyone starts observing them, right? And it presumably can't help but change you when people are constantly saying, um, Mr Minchin, would you like warm water or cold water? Would you like your water with lemon in it or yeah. no lemon in it? And, and it changes you both in that you get used to being spoiled but also in that it, it de-skills you. So you get hopeless if you're not careful. And so I don't know how a 21-year-old would not fall into those traps. And you should be poor in your 20s anyway because that's when you develop your ideas and your values that are disconnected from acquisitions and wealth and all that, surely. It'd be, it'd be good if you could just make sure no-one gets any money until they're 30. You can fill 10,000-seat auditoriums, you know, with your solo shows. Um... Is there a certain pressure that comes with that or is it actually harder when you're in your 20s and playing small venues where everyone can individually make eye contact with you? Uh, I think there's different types of pressure. I did a gig in Perth at the Frio Town Hall last week and I was really nervous in the first song, partly because I hadn't practised and wasn't doing comedy. Um, you always want people to expect nothing and blow their minds. If they expect their minds blown, you're kind of screwed. It's why comedy careers often do that and it's why I've embraced the fact that it's zeitgeisty. But um, not that I'm done, it's just... Uh, and I must say, actually, I, it doesn't particularly bother me. I, I know that's a thing, but I, it's not in my personality to... I, th I see all everything I do, all, all art as an offer, coming back to an artefact of what you did in the time given. It's, uh, it's some stuff, you know. And then you've just got to not read reviews because reviews don't go into it with the same spirit.